Rub up your engines! Well, here we go with red hot Teslas again. A Tesla started on fire in California, and then the house next to it caught on fire too. Now, the firefighters say that the back end of the car started on fire, so you had another Tesla starting on fire. You got a regular car. Do they ever really start on fire sitting there? No, that's the thing. You know, you're driving a car, gasoline car, something really weird goes wrong, starting on fire. It's a relatively rare occurrence, but they don't just sit there and start on fire. With these electric cars, you never know what they're going to be doing. You better make sure you got fire insurance on that one. <laughs> if you buy an electric car, take my advice. Do not just get liability. You need everything collision, fire, all that stuff. You never know what's going to happen to those things. Newer cars, right? None of them are that old. What's going to happen to these things when they get old? <laughs> <laughs> they say they have the fail safe stuff in it now. Wait till the old stuff starts to break. It's, it's really going to be a giant mess, if you ask me. It's bad enough. You try to get one fixed. Oh, it'll be three weeks to uh, six months before we can get parts to fix your car because the guy doesn't make spare parts. He's using all the parts to build the car. So you got to take this stuff into consideration, flocking onto the bandwagon and jump on the Tesla electric car revolution because let me tell you something. It's going to be a revolution that you may regret if you join it. Well, if you're planning on buying a classic car, here's a bit of warning. Make sure you you check the VIN number, get the vehicle, see the VIN number, and check it to make sure that it's a legal vehicle. And there was a guy in Kansas who bought a 59 Corvette, beautiful car, right? It was stolen somewhere. You never know. Make sure before you buy. Now, this guy, there was a VIN discrepancy. He paid 50 grand for the car. He's already spent $30,000 on lawyers. Now he says it's been damaged in storage. So it costs him another 30. So it's $50,000 car. If he gets it back on the road, it's going to cost him $110,000. Do a little research when you buy something. Check the numbers. Make sure the numbers match. Make sure they are correct numbers. In Kansas, they were just going to take his car and destroy it because they said it was an illegal car. We didn't know if it was stolen. The numbers didn't match. You can get in a big stink. If you can prove to the highway police that there's no stolen parts on the car, they can give them a new VIN number for the car. And there's all kinds of weird rules. And you get involved in all kinds of crap when you're dealing with classic stuff. Make sure that it's legitimate before you write that check. Because if it isn't, you're going to have to deal with the headaches of the thing. Is it legally registered anywhere? When was it last? legally registered somewhere. You buy a regular car, hey, you get the title with it, right? And the people are driving it around, so you know it's legally registered somewhere. You can even do a Carfax on it, right? Try doing a Carfax on a 59 Corvette. You probably won't get any information at all, you know? So when you're dealing with classic cars, it's a little bit trickier than buying regular cars. Sometimes they haven't been on the road in 40 years. Now, when you're going to register put it on the road, you might find you're in a big stink trying to register in your state. Find the laws in your state. Get the numbers before you actually buy buy one of these things and then get stuck like this guy with a $50,000 car that to get back on the road, it's probably going to cost them $110,000. It's just like some of these guys think, I want to buy one of those cars from Japan. You know, I can get them for only three grand. Yeah, then you find out when you import them, the laws they got them made. They even had a thing up in Maine where people had them on the road and then the Maine said, you can't drive these. They're not legal on the road, even though they let them put in and register them first. Now they're saying you can't drive these cars on the road. So look into the aspects of any car you're going to buy before you actually buy it. If you're going to use it on the road, now if you want a toy and you got a museum or you want to park it in your barn and look at it or drive it just out in the country on your own field, go right ahead. But if you can drive it on the roads, check the laws, check the mints, do that before you actually buy it. Don't get stuck like this guy did in Kansas. Our slant says, I got a Honda Civic. The radiator is rusting. I'm losing coolant. I changed the coolant, ran first coolant three times, but two to three days, the coolant gets brown. About 300 miles, I got to add coolant. It's not heating up, but I'm losing coolant. Once the system's dirty, you're going to have so much corrosion, unless you have it professionally flushed, it's going to get dirty. That I wouldn't worry about, because the only thing you worry about is the loss of the anti-corrosion ability of the coolant. If you put new coolant in it, it's still good for years. If you use the Honda coolant, it's good for five to seven years. So that you don't have to worry about, but you're losing coolant. There's got to be a reason you're losing coolant. I watched my video, how to fix an overheating car, Scotty. Now it's not overheating, but of course, if you didn't add the coolant, it would, so you got a coolant system problem. Pressure test the system, you might have a leak somewhere. First, just replace the radiator cap. That seals the system. If it's not sealed, it'll evaporate and you'll lose coolant. Now, you want to pray you don't have a blown head gasket because that'll keep getting it dirty. So, you might want to do my video, How to Tell If Your Head Gasket's Blown Scotty. Type that in YouTube. Watch it. 
You get that little block leak tester. Amazon sells them on sale for like 30 bucks or so. If the blue liquid turns yellow, you know your head gasket's starting to call. And now you say it runs good, but let's say it shows it's starting to blow the head gasket, but it runs good. You can use some of that bars engine sealer, and that works pretty good. I fixed the Honda the other day with one. We drove it around for 20 minutes, came back, it wasn't leaking anymore. It's, it's amazing stuff. But test it first. If it doesn't show it's blown, don't waste your time putting any sealer in because that's not the problem. Get a pressure test and do all those tests that I show because it's got to be going somewhere. Pray it's just your radiator cap is worn out. But it's a new car, so I mean, the whole thing seems kind of weird. It's that new. If you've ever wrecked a car or something, who knows? But you know, do those tests. How to fix an overheating car engine, Scotty. Do that first and start there. Our merchant 4006 says, I got a camera I can't find. The sway bar bushings. Where can I find these parts? It bounces around Dallas and it drives like a boat. A mechanic says he can't get the part. He says the sway bar and bushing isn't what we're looking for. We're looking for the brackets that mount there. It's a 96 Camry, so it's an old car. Try Hemmings Motor News online. There's guys that sell everything there, but if they can't, you're gonna have to try junkyards. Junkyards have all kinds of stuff. They're not gonna charge you much for those two little pieces. There's not much to them. Try some junkyards. And there are junkyards that have junkyard hotlines. They can check all over the country to find them. But the only hassle you have is the 96. It's a really old vehicle, and most of those are probably already crushed. And there aren't any left even in the junkyards. Toyota Fan 2 says, Scotty, addicted to YouTube. Thanks. Two years ago, New Jersey switches to winter gas. My 2011 RAV4 has a slight idle stumble when I brake. It never stalled. My mechanic, says there's nothing wrong with my car but he says others have issue with the winter gas as well problem goes away when spring comes the winter gas is made for the colder weather and to burn cleaner because in a winter with the heavy dense air cities pollute more i saw the same thing when i'd visit albuquerque new mexico in the winter albuquerque's down like got bowls surrounded by mountains and stuff so they get temperature inversions like la so in the winter they switch to a gasoline that burns better and pollutes less in the winter but often the vapor pressure is higher so the cars won't idle perfectly now if that's the case i mean try different gas stations to use different brands maybe one's got a different mix than the other because you see it goes completely away in the summer maybe you should get like a 500 gallon tank at your house and store all the summer stuff use it all the time it generally doesn't make any difference with the running truly it's more of an anti-pollution thing than anything else but you know try a bunch of different stations see what happens if you find one that has got a little bit better gas yours doesn't stumble on go ahead it's not going to hurt anything but i agree it's kind of annoying it doesn't do it in the summer but it does in the winter gasolines are different mainly for anti-pollution reasons a rogue says i have a fuel pump problem I got a 2012 Kia Soul. I have power to the fuel pump relay. The fuse is good. Replace the crank and cam sensors. Replace the ECM. I have ground to the fuel pump, but no power. I ran the fuel pump directly to the battery and the car started up. I'm stuck. There's a problem with power not getting to your fuel pump. You would have to check the entire wiring system of the car. Now, you said you replaced the ECM. Did you see the guy actually do it like this? Oh, I tried the computer, but that wasn't it. Because normally it's the computer when it works like that, where it's not getting any power whatsoever and you power it and it runs perfectly fine you could either replace the wiring but you said you connect it directly to the battery here's what i do if i were you i just run a toggle switch run power from the battery to the toggle switch toggle switch through a fuse to the pump and then realize when you start your car pretend it's an airplane fuel fuel click the fuel switch on start it and drive it or you can go through the whole electronic system and maybe the guys lied they didn't replace the computer but you put power to it and it runs hey why not just rewire it with a simple switch that you can turn on or off and if you really want to go whole hog you could run it off your ignition system but then you would have to use a relay because you can't run the ignition switch power to the pump anymore because it's all computerized so you'd have to get a relay hook that up and rewire that it's a lot easier just to put a toggle switch and a fuse in line going to the pump and then just pretend it's an airplane on and then when you turn it off turn it off simple fix because if you don't you're gonna have to go through all that electronic and you might find out that the guy didn't replace your computer and that was the whole thing or and i've seen this maybe he did replace the computer but maybe there's a wiring short going to the pump that will burn out the circuit in the new computer like that so I tell you, if you can fix something simpler, fix it simpler. Mr. Bob says, my coolant level is lower on my 2021 Kia Sorento. I got a 2021 I bought in December 2020. The coolant has a level about half an inch below the minimum line. I haven't checked it. 
and it stays there. Is this bad? How much do you normally expect over a year's time? That's totally normal. That little tiny bit. There's always some usage, a little bit of evaporation. They're not perfectly sealed systems. Now you take a Toyota Corolla. I've seen some of those six years old, and they're still right at the same level because they're better made systems. The Kias are not as perfectly sealed, but that's that tiny little bit, and it's staying there. I wouldn't worry about it at all. That's not that big of a deal. You could just put some 50/50 mixture and put it back to the regular line and see what happens. And of course, realize too, it's it's hot and it's cold. It's hot and it's cold. It expands, it contracts, it goes up and down. That's why it's called an expansion tank because it expands when it's hot and it shrinks when it's cold. So if it stays around where it is now, it's really not going to hurt anything. And it's pretty normal for a Kia. They're not perfectly sealed systems like a Toyota or a Honda. But you know, your temperature gauge still runs in the middle and everything. That's relatively normal for one of those vehicles. And realize it depends where the level is. When you're looking at it, it's hot. Is it cold? Because it's going to move around. As long as it's not getting empty and you got to keep filling it up, that's perfectly fine on a Kia. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.